we spoke about trusting your calculation. That's what we said. And we have shown several positions, games, actually two games in particular that the kings, we shown one game of none, that the king marched all the way to f5, all here, and then white won the game quite quickly. And we've shown another game between really two of the best players in the world, Gashimov against Grishuk, that Black's king made it all the way something like this, and he won the game. You know this game, Julian? It's very... You know what? Uh, it, you see? But if you weren't here last week and didn't see it, thanks to our important part of our production band, you can see it on our channel. As many as many others of my funny shows and other Grandmaster educational shows. Right? You know, we are, we are a team. You know, Leaser and Var and others do serious chess and we the entertainment part. But I said that we will continue a tiny bit with this idea. And I was thinking today, well, I had some other games that I was thinking maybe of showing, but then I was thinking, you know, there's probably one of the best games ever in history, although it has one flaw. Kasparov said that it's probably his best game, and considering that he's maybe the best player, maybe it's a lot. His game against Topalov. Do you know this game, Julian? Okay, this one you know. And the other one, you have to go to our YouTube channel and watch it. But it's cool. Okay, so this is between Kasparov and Topalov. The funny part, the interesting part, is that Topalov himself is really fearless as well. Like, many of his games are as wild as possible. He really trusts whatever he feels about the position. Sometimes he's actually gambling too much. But... That's how, what I wanted to show you last week and today. Whatever dangerous the position is, if you believe in that, well, you should go with it. So this was played about, well, 14, 15 years ago almost. You know, actually in next month we're going to, Vacant Day is going to start another tournament. This is in Vacant Day to 1999. Okay, playing the peers, no, no big, not really important to mm, see the opening, although Isabel is moving the pieces on the board and we will move it slow for her so she can get the position. Okay, queen d2. <coughs> Basically white is going more or less to, well, you were here last week, right? When we spoke about the king marching, no? <gasps> Really, it's like amazing. Okay. <clears throat> we are having here a structure that opposition that's very s s quickly going to be like the English attack. White is going to play F3, Long Castle, G4. Similar ideas in the Sicilian. That's when Bishop E3 is being played. Okay, C6, F3. Okay, Kasparov also understand that. B5, Knight G2. Okay. Well, there are many possibilities here, like... G4, cast, whatever. Knight G2, Knight Bd7. Black is tiny bit delaying castle. Why delays castle? Because it gives him possibility in some situations to castle the other way. If he will castle here, bishop h6, h4, well, of course it's a main pos major possibility, but bishop h6, take, take, bishop b7, a3. Okay, very soon we will get to our important position. E5. Okay, quite logical. By the way, why A3 was played? Well, to prevent black from expanding on the queen side. Long castle, queen E7. Which move is quite normal in, those, in such positions? For white, yeah. I mean, you castled long. Well, how to continue? Um, D5. D5, you mean? 
<laughs> yeah, that's a possibility, but Black just might capture and you open the file for him. Or maybe Black will play a 6. It's a possibility, but, well, many times just moving the king to a safety. You know, moving the king away from to defend the pawns if something happens, moving it away from a C file that sometimes gets to open. Okay, King B1 is kind of almost a safe automatic move. A6. I wonder if in this position, A5 actually would be a move that I think deserves serious attention. Like, I'm not certain why, why A5 wasn't played. Huh. Hmm. Houdini's first choice, A5. <laughs> I, just, I just checked. Okay. No, it's just logical because I, I was just thinking during the, if he played a3 to stop before, okay, so I'll play a5 to play before. Okay. Well, available for classes at the St. Louis Chess Club. <laughs> Alright, a6. Now very strong positional maneuver that actually we see in some, in the Zemish vari variation of the King's Indian. Like I'm not going to show exactly, but there is very pretty hole here. One day, if we can get our knight. That's, that's a really decent square. Knight to c1. The, in the Zemish there are some ideas like that. Castle, knight b3, capture, capture. Okay, we are just getting to that pos the interesting position. c5 and back. So it's really interesting, this position. On one hand, okay, so what we have here, it's kind of bizarre to see Black's king where his pawns are so much advanced, right? It means that his king is somewhat weak. On the other hand, he has quite nice development and all the pieces are, well, all the pieces are out and he also controls some space. It's like if white rook would have been here, no, okay, it would be nicer to say, hey, white has all these pieces in nice squares. But he doesn't. Knight b6. Well, black wants to play d5. g3. Interesting idea. The bishop going to <coughs> h3. King moving. Same, same way that white play king b1. Those are very safe, solid, simple moves. Knight to a5. Bishop back to a8, bishop out, d5, okay, quite a lot is happening already, many pawns in the center, but I'm kind of moving quickly because the action is just going to start, one of the greatest games ever, check, and rookie one. They, they mention a line if capture, capture. And white might use this outpost for his, for his knight to jump. Black king is a bit vulnerable. For example, then if take, and black is lost. Black just lost the game. Yep. No, okay, black doesn't have to lose immediately, but black played the move d4. Jump. Knight take. Okay, this is one of the most amazing positions ever. Ever. Kasparov sacrificed not one rook, but two rooks. And believe it or not, I'll give you a heads up. Black king got checkmated or he lost all a lot of material when black king was here made all the way to d1 this move we will start seeing the ideas it's beyond incredible what is happening here 
The dark spot about this game is that this combination is not perfect. It's not perfect. Actually, Black has a refutation, and those are, okay, those are two of the best players in the world. They didn't play that. I wonder what Kasparov, by the way, would have played after. We will see taking the rook. Of course, it's our most critical line, right? We just had our previous lecture about material captures, false signals, all those things. So, of course, this will be the main thing. But actually, the correct move for Black would have been to play this insane, unbelievable move, king b6. Attacking the knight and getting the king out of danger in some lines. For example, if the queen goes here, you don't want to take the rook. Taking the rook, going to take the knight. And if this, going to take this knight. And if this, going to take this one. And if king takes white's knight, it will transpose to similar versions of the game. But let me just go back. If just take is a very powerful move. And crazy position, under attack, bizarre spot. Where is the king? But computers say that black is actually better in this position. And uh, some other lines that are in this position are playing this incredible move before. Once again, it is impossible to take the rook. Take, take, only move, check, and winning. Impossible to take the, impossible to take the rook. But, but, He took the rook immediately. Now what to play? Second rook is being sacrificed, but cannot be taken. If take, OK, this is your part to tell me what, what white is playing here. Let's follow the forcing moves. Take the pawn on d4 check. OK, king has to go here. Only move. Bless you. Queen check on which square? Um, yes. On block. And now? And then you check with and then the knight to uh, c6. And actually checkmate on the next move. Forget about the queen. King a8, queen a7. So forget the queen. <laughs> and if this move? Take the knight. Forget the queen. Checkmate. So impossible to take. Now, why, why not take immediately? Because of some line like this. And now, black can give the knight. He's forcing exchanges here. That's not OK. Not so great for white. White is down a full rook. So white played check. The knight cannot block, because the queen is under attack, right? You cannot interpose over there. OK, king b6. Take. Hmm. Yeah, queen blocking, just not working. I mean, they have some complicated lines, but even material-wise, white already got enough here. He has a piece and two pawns. But we are going to see the adventure. OK. Now think about it. This is not some. You know, I don't know. Uh, bug house game starring Julian and several of the other heroes up there, right? Although it might look like it. But look, this Topalov became world champion in 
2005, winning big, was the highest rated player in the world for a few years. So, no joke, those are really, really the best players, best players out there. And Kasparov, well, Kasparov. You don't see the king on, you don't see the king on A4 that many times. Okay, queen c3. Now, they have some analysis saying that mm, there are some ideas about the true case 7 might have been a better move. <coughs> but it's not very clear, actually. I, I do not agree with that big analysis. I think that the way Kasparov played is very strong. But queen c3, okay, threatening checkmate. White is down, a rook and a piece. So if he's not going to really checkmate black, it's not really okay. It's really scary to play that position when you are, d for both players. I mean, Topalo was kind of forced into this position. Well, he actually had one possibility to play king b6. For white, if white is not going to checkmate here or basically win the queen, he's pretty much going to lose the game. Okay, so he's threatening checkmate. Well, queen b3 is checkmate. What happens if bishop take? I'm sorry? But, well, yeah, he's, pre he's preventing this move. Which move? King B2. King B2. And what's your idea with King B2? To Excellent. Oh my gosh, yes. Amazing. And does it matter what black plays? L look at this position. Isn't this one from fairy tales? Look at that. I mean, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, so queen take. What's the difference if king to b2 then exchanging queens and that's not really nice. Right? Def exchanging is the best method of defense. You just you just get rid of the attacking pieces. All right. Rook a7, okay, threatening a checkmate, bishop b7, why not, why not rook d6, okay, why to defend with the bishop, King b2, but we said king d queen d4 before. But that's the thing, the rook is overloaded because he's defending a6 and he cannot support d4. No, you just take. Exactly. So that's why the rook, basically, basically the rook is already occupied by defending the queen on d4 against King b2. So bishop b7. Take. <laughs> now, there are many, many possibilities in this position. Many possibilities. Of course, to take the rook is checkmate immediately. 
So which moves would make sense if you are black in this position? Which move makes sense here to play? After that. Rook B8. Rook B8. OK, but what is white's threat? <laughs> Think about that. Rook B8. And if I will play this with this idea? <laughs> Not now. So the rook cannot really move anywhere. So wha how do you defend such position? How to defend in general? One, you exchange the opponent attacking pieces. <coughs> Two, you bring defenders. Right? You bring defenders. So let's say we want to bring this one. In the game, Topalov played queen c4. We will see in a second. Threatening checkmate. This move. Now comes one of the most unbelievable moves ever. I mean, I can. Uh, the fact that Kasparov has seen this move is <coughs> beyond unbelievable. Look. This is an idea to, to drive the queen away, but queen c4 is possible. This move is, is really inhumane. I mean, I, I, I think that he saw it at, at least at some point, but I really think it's quite unbelievable. Basically, now he wants to be able to play this move and drive black's queen away. I mean, just that move, rook d6, and drive the queen away. And the game is completely, completely over in this position. Because, by the way, this move immediately, yeah? Rook d6 right now? So this is incredible. Just the idea of rook d6. Unbelievable. I mean, queen c4. Take. OK, still threatening checkmate. OK. The best line, you know, I, I, I always say that there is no checkmate in chess, <laughs> right? I mean, I've said it in many lectures here. And this. What, what, what do I mean by that? That on most attacking games, doesn't matter how unbelievable they are, there's some way for the defender to give back material, avoid checkmate, and be in a reasonable spot. Like, OK, not giving away a queen. But like I, I said it many times, like sacrifice is an investment. You basically say, hey, take a rook. I'm attacking you. I think that to avoid checkmate, you will need to give me six points. OK, so I won one point. Right? That's basically the idea of sacrifice. Very few sacrifices is really, OK, checkmate. I mean, at high level. Most of the time, there are ways to defend. And even in this most unbelievable, incredible game, it's no, no exception. Look, best line suggested by a computer is rook d1, king b2. OK, needs to defend against checkmate. Threatening checkmate again. Exchange. Take, take, take. a5. A5, 
at the end of all this incredible line, <laughs> if the king goes back, Justin going to take, and if take, White's going to have three, three connected pass pawns and a bishop for a rook, right? So at the end of this incredible line, White is getting into a rook endgame with a pawn up, and probably winning. Look at Black's king and the pawns over there. So the end of this incredible checkmate idea and sacrifice and brilliant and everything, whatever you want to name it, the end of this, if black defend perfectly, white is a pawn up, he's still going to win the game. Yeah. With perfect, With perfect and, and this is really important to understand. Many people are sacrifice checkmate. Very, very rarely. We have seen in the World Championship, okay, there was no sacrifices, how Carlsen defended that game nine and didn't get checkmated. Like, but there was no even no sacrifice. But Okay, Topalov took. Check. And now which move? I will let you tiny bit think and tell me which move would you think white should play? So Kasparov played this incredible move c3. And he really, really had to see that because if he doesn't long many moves ago, because if he doesn't have those possibilities, if those possibilities do not exist, he's really in trouble. Actually, we will get to a position that is beyond incredible one move. So now let's see. It's very simple to understand what's happening. If king c5, no-brainer, right? What are we going to play? Just win the queen. I, I, I don't need to look for checkmate. You know, our brain stops here. Winning the queen stops. There is better, great. If this move, there are several ways to play here. What's, what would you suggest? I will let you suggest a good continuation here for white. There are several ways to win, but I just need one. Rook takes pawn, take. I think I got it. Shoot, Mike. Queen to a two, check. King, King takes it. Queen to b two, check. King to d three, bishop to f one, check. Perfect, 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 and. And it's very important, just the way of thinking, forcing move in each of the lines that Mike suggested, black had one move. It's very simple. It's making our life much easier when we have to see a straight line. I play this, this is a straight line, as opposed to I play this move, okay, you can go here, 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 and then in each one here, 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 then you get endless amount of possibilities. This is the power of forcing moves. Straight line. Queen a2, by the way, take on b5 also winning, but queen a2, check, black has one move. Queen b2, check, black has one move. And we stop our calculation. And we stop it. I mean, okay, there's, I think, Rook e7, maybe even stronger some lines. I don't know, right, wrong. I don't care about that. Bishop f1 Bishop f is winning, and that's enough for us. OK, keep queen take impossible, so king take. Now, craziest line, check. OK, let's see. If king d3, we will follow Mike's idea and play bishop f1, win the queen. King d2 was played in the game, so we will see it in a second. What if king b4? OK, once again, you know, you're, you're doing this with me, right? So if not, it will be too boring. White to play. How does white win here? Check with the queen on. Check with the queen on. on and then, okay, let's say black black plays king here. Oh, Which move? Checkmate. But how? Rook, rook to a7. Ooh. Slowly.
Okay, we have to follow false thing lines. You will follow false thing lines, you will win here. Mike, do you have an idea? Yes. So queen b2. Okay, that's a start. Okay. If, king, if king a4 checkmate, if king c5, you're just going to take the queen, right? Yeah. Rook c7. Okay, so I go here. Okay, now queen a3. Queen to a3. Black has one move. And now? Yes. Perfect. As long as you keep it in one line, it will be easier. Okay. King to b3 is, of course, is of course really checkmate. White will play queen b2, and then the king go here. Rook a7 checkmate. So, only move. Check. Now, here is the tricky part. If black king is going to step to e3 or e1, what is white going to play? If black king is going to step to those squares, what would white play? Mm, you don't want to exchange. Yeah, it will just remember if we said how, how to defend, we want to bring more, more, more defenders. If white connects the rook with the attack, it's over. I mean, if king take f3, queen g2 is actually a cool checkmate. The, if white will connect the rook, that's it, it's over on the spot. Okay, so king d1. Amazing. Like seriously, those, those are like, here, they show you the path of the king. <laughs> I mean, in world champion to become world champion. I mean, this is unbelievable. But you have to trust your calculation. Like, you know, the, our topic here and was, was last week. If you are afraid, if you are scared, despite that you see that it's good, no. You have to play it. You know, you have to play. Maximum you, have, you calculate it wrong, you learn to calculate better. Saying I'm scared is not anything in those two people repertoire, two players. But here came unbelievable move. I remember I analyzed it quite deeply and looking at that. And the thing is that we are thinking in this position. Kasparov had to see this many moves before. Many, many moves before. You don't give a rook, a rook and a bishop for your mood or feeling. So which move here? You don't have the luxury of playing such a move. No? No? <laughs> no? I mean, okay, you're going to be checkmated immediately, let's say. If you will play rookie seven, I will play check. What will you play? You're going to move your king here? Okay, le let me move my the rook. Well, I mean, white king is not like in safe heaven. I mean, look at white king. And it's not like there are a thousand pieces on the board here. I mean, black wants to win in one move. That's the thing, that white has one move here. One move not to resign, but that's the move that's winning. If this move wouldn't exist, this would be a horrible game. But it's one of the greatest games ever. Mike, do you have an idea? You're looking at something. Uh, not, not yet. I okay. see one way to prevent queen of these. And which one is that? Bishop back to f1. Let, let's say bishop f4. F, if f5 take, if bishop right. f1, at least you make. Right, at least I can check now. What, what happens if the queen goes? Take. Where are you going to check? Here? You play bishop f1. Uh, I, I probably want to get the queen, so. I would just play f. Yeah, I would just play f. Okay. Yeah, so c1, cool. king e2. Well, but I, I want to keep him off of e2, so. Uh huh, uh huh. So yeah, I guess, I guess yeah, queen to c2. Queen to c2, then the king will go to e1. And this move is unbelievable, not to see it here. Like, Mike said it very simply, there is only one way, pretty much, to get, away, to get black not to play queen d3. 
without this move, white is lost. Lost. But after this move, white is just winning. This is just checkmate. It's just a little too early. This, this is just checkmate. Just checkmate, no joke. This is just checkmate, no joke. Mm -hmm. Rook d2 was played. Now, the amazing thing is that, you know why white is winning this? Because of one thing. Well, white still in, needs to find a move to play. Well, what to play here with white? If you take, 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 black is better actually. Okay, maybe it's a draw. Check and it might be a draw. What to play with white? If you take the queen, it's going to take here. Very good. That's your move, right, Mike? Yeah. It's incredible. And why is white winning, white winning this game? Well, threatening to take. But he's not winning because of checkmate. You know, if this rook, you see this rook? This rook was here. Black is super OK. Black, black is just going to take. Maybe black is better. Maybe draw. But why white is winning? Because white managed to win material. No checkmate. There was no checkmate here. If the rook was on g8, black would be OK. So after all this unbelievable thing, the game is finished because of, well, OK, the, the rest is just technical part. Well, still, maybe some work, but OK, resign. Because check here, and the pawns are falling, and so on. This, this is amazing. The moves bishop f1, especially bishop f1, to me, I think, like, incredible. To see it many moves before and after bishop f1, rook d7. You know, and with some players, it might be coincidence. With Kasparov, you can probably bet that he had seen it, and had seen it many, many moves before. Yeah, no, this, that's why it's one of the greatest attacking games ever. But the important thing is, again, when you, when you play something and you believe your calculations, you know, you should stick to that. Doesn't matter if it looks scary, if it's a lot of material. Maybe for next week, you know, I'll show a little bit about, especially since someone here showed me. I'll show, well, I, I actually never, I don't think I ever showed it here. Like the tiny bit same idea, a bullet game that I played that was not perfect, but it was a bullet game. And it, okay, it got like a lot, a lot of publicity because my opponent was really strong and he got checkmated here and it was a queen sacrifice. So something in that spirit, although the big difference is that combination that I played was not a sound combination. In a normal game, I would not play that because there was a refutation, most likely, I would think for five or 10 minutes and see that. But it turned out to be some brilliancy because, well, there was no great defense. In this game, I mean, of course, it's best players in the world and almost perfect game. The only dark spot was the move king b6 that Topalov could have played, and he didn't have to enter this craziness. Mm -hmm.